Hi, this is Nicole Kupchik, and this is 10 Minute Tidbits. Today, I'm here with Joel Green, and we are going to chat about families and families being present in hospitals. And so, Joel, how long have you been a nurse? You've been uh, a nurse for 16 long? years this 16, year. Yeah, yeah, I just hit 25 years. <laughs> But anyway, okay, but, you know, when I first became a nurse, this is no joke, we, I started in the Chicago area, Northwest Indiana, and we literally would have 15 minute visit mm -hmm. times every two hours. Yeah. You missed that time? Couldn't come in. Sorry, yeah. Charlie. So sad, right? You know, so anyway, but things have really changed since I've been a nurse. Mm -hmm. And what, because you've been, the 15 years yeah, is not a short time right. though, but in your tenure, what have you seen happen? Well, I mean, I started on acute care and like, yeah. I remember acute care had set hospital visiting hours. So okay. it was the 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. only, but right. acute care had open visiting. Okay, and so you guys did. Originally, okay. yeah. All right, cool. And then when I moved to the ICU, it was the first time I started experiencing locked units. And we yeah. had a locked unit in the first ICU I worked in yeah. that was post open heart. And it was like, you only get... 15 minutes, come in, say hi, see them, yeah. and then the nurse gets their time, and then as they get better, we'll give you more time. Okay. But still, it was a lot So door very to get limited. Yeah. yeah, so very limited. So, but we've really seen this transition. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the um, ICU delirium.org, a kind of delirium protocols and uh, studies. It's called the um, ABCDEF protocol. Mm -hmm. So, this is for delirium prevention, and the F stands for family. And there's new newer data that we really should be allowing families at the bedside yeah. you know yeah and I'll, I'll never forget when I was um, a teenager my I uh, grew up with my grandparents and uh, my grandmother was really sick and I'll never forget like we missed the 15 minute window and like we just that was it you couldn't come yeah. in and it, it, there was just so there was no give on that it is that's wrong mm -hmm. I, I just think it's absolutely wrong so there's some newer data um, on families being at the bedside. And so uh, there was a meta-analysis that was published. So again, I'm sorry, I've got my notes here. I'm going to uh, kind of refer to my notes because I want to get these all these statistic right, uh, these statistics right. But, um, but it was a meta-analysis of seven different studies. And what they did is they included observational and randomized control trials and asked the question, is there benefit from having family at the bedside? And so what do you think the answer is? The answer is yes, yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and they were we're looking at things like length of stay, yeah. delirium, mm -hmm. um, there was a couple other things in that study. Yeah, that... so they looked at frequency of delirium, they looked at a severity of anxiety mm -hmm. symptoms, uh, patient satisfaction. And family satisfaction I think was on there as well. And bedside nursing satisfaction. Right. So let's look at these. Um, so just so you guys know, in the notes, I'll have the reference to the study that we're talking about. But what they did was they compared flexible to kind of mm. open uh, visitation, and then they evaluated at least one patient family or ICU staff related outcome. And what they found is when you had flexible visitation, that it reduced, this was all statistically significant, it reduced the frequency of delirium. Yeah. So with, if families were at the bedside, patients didn't get delirious as often. Well, and you think about that too, like patients who are in the ICU, their view that they see, and oh, it's something yeah. you should try, a lot of newer programs when they're onboarding for orientation are trying yeah. it, where you actually sit in the bed, and this is what you see 24 hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. Fluorescent lights. Fluorescent light in your face. Sprinklers uh, in the random ceiling. Random people coming in and out all hours of yeah. your day. Noise. Curtains, <gasps> noise, yeah. all this kind of stuff is all right. you see. And so there's nothing familiar to kind yeah. of ground you. And family is that thing that's starting to ground patients back. Yeah, absolutely. So other things they uh, evaluated. Um, so frequency of delirium, uh, severity of anxiety symptoms. So there was a statistical difference in decreased severity of anxiety of patients, yeah. which is huge. This is absolutely huge. Um, so things, so how many, have you ever heard like, oh, I don't want that family at the bedside because they're going to bring in an infection right. or, um, what else have you heard? Yeah. Like, well, and I mean, they just don't know the rules or they're going to yeah. touch things or they're going to interrupt my day and make my care plan worse. Which... They're... They do at times, yeah. but okay. um, the interesting thing is if you rewind a little bit, there was a study by AACN in 2012 where they looked at family visitation and they, that was the top things nurses were worried about. They were worried about infection. Okay. 
They were worried about just disruption of the plan of care. Okay. Um, noise. They were worried about children in the ICU, which yeah. is another topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, like, I'm just going to put yeah. my bias out here. I'm sorry. You're freaking newborn. Like, no. And I'm sure I'm preaching the choir on this one. But your newborn should not no. be at the bedside. They don't have right. an immune system. Yeah, right. Like, can you imagine that you had a room with maybe a patient who had C. diff mm -hmm. and you're bringing a newborn? I just don't get it. But yeah. anyway, okay. Common um, sense does not always prevail. <laughs> All right. And their other thing was the staff burnout. Yes. Uh, and then what they found out was that there was more staff burnout when there was a more open policy. Yeah. And it's just, again, it's one of those things where nursing duties get stretched thinner by yeah. adding in another arm to nursing's plan. Yeah. Well, let me finish up the results yeah. of this study. And then I want to touch on that again. But um, so they found reduced delirium lower um, symptoms of anxiety, um, they found that flexible visitation was not associated with increased risk of ICU mortality, which I wouldn't have thought that would yeah. be the case. But anyway, um, they did not find that the ICU length of stay was longer. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and that there was greater satisfaction. There was not an increase of infection. So mm -hmm. families were not right. spreading infection. Um, now here is the thing I think that, now families were satisfied and patients were satisfied. Now here is the thing that I think is interesting that you already touched on, is that flexible visitation was associated with higher staff burnout. Yeah. So I personally think that if you have a problematic family, mm -hmm. I think that should be included in the acuity level of the patient. Right. Oh, I totally. do. It takes time. Yeah. I, you know, I will never forget, it was about, oh gosh, a year and a half ago, I was taking care of this patient and she just had very angry children. Her children were super angry and her daughter was in my face yelling at me. I literally had not even met her for more than five minutes. So, I mean, I'm mature enough. I mean, I'm on the older side, right? I'm mature enough to know that it was not about me. Right. It's about her. But I can't, I was like sitting there as she was yelling because I'm at this point where I can just disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's a sick thing that happens yeah. after you've been doing this a while, right? But I was able to disconnect and I just was thinking in my head, like I wonder, like I thank God it's me and not some young 25-year-old right. nurse who's starting out who maybe would take this the wrong way because I know it's not about me yeah. and um, and I the only thing I could say back to her as she's in my face screaming is that, you know, I'm sorry, I, I know you're going through a lot. I mean, what else do I say, right? Because this isn't about me. Mm -hmm. This is about their family dynamics. Right. But I think that should be included in the patient oh, acuity ratings. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, staff if, for it. if you've got extra family that are constantly needing things from us, they are part of our patient's plan of care. Absolutely. And we're being told that, you know, by hospitals, mm -hmm. that the family, you know, is part of the care. Then staff to it. Right. Then staff, I don't know. I, I feel strongly yeah. about this. Yes, yeah, I would 100% agree. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I do think family should be there, though. I do. Yeah. So what do we do? It's, I mean, that's the thing is the research is continuing to come out. I mean, we look at some of these other studies that looked at percentages of nurses that say, yes, we should do it versus what's actually out there. Yeah. And they say that like 80% of nursing is pro family and yeah. open restrictions saying that yeah. we should let them in and be part. But the, the meta-analysis shows that only 70% of units are still restrictive in the ICU. Really? I know yeah. I asked this question because I presented this study at NTI, and, um, and I asked the question, how many of you have restricted visitation? And I was actually surprised over 50% yeah. said they had, still have some uh, restrictions on visitation of families. Yeah. So, you know, I think, we, you know, we've got to just, I, I do think they need to be there. Um, but I just do think we need to provide support to right. Nurses. Yeah. So anyway, I'll stop belaboring that. Point. And I think also too is in our care plan. A lot of it is yeah. family education yeah. um, because when they come to the ICU, they often they don't know our rules, and sometimes that can take time just helping them establish the rules of hey, this patient's in C diff. You need to wash your hands. You yeah. need to count up, count down. Um, or when we have big events going on in the unit, like someone's getting a procedure done, or there's a code going on, explaining to family what's going on down the hall helps them reduce their anxiety and also they may understand during that time that they shouldn't 
that they'll try not to call during those yeah. times. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. Um, yeah. Is having that little bit of education sometimes makes a big difference in your day to reduce the amount of workload yeah. that they they can cause. Well, and I and I honestly think most families are reasonable. Right. They're extremely reasonable, yeah. and they are going through one of the most hellish periods of their life. Yeah. You know, having somebody in the ICU or progressive care or tele or the ED. Um, you know, and I always try to have that understanding. But you know, in, in the same token, I have been spit on, kicked. Well, by patients. Um, I have been threatened by family members. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had one guy, I'll never forget, um, it was about 15 years ago, who threatened to shoot us. And I took his threat seriously yeah. and I reported it. And they had to, they called the police and it became this big hubbub. But, you know, if you tell me you're going to shoot me, I believe you. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know. And, um, Especially and working then, in a level one trauma center. Yeah, yeah, well, this was actually not a level yeah. one trauma center. This was a uni academic yeah. oh. university center that was a cardiothoracic ICU. So, um, yeah, so anyway, but, um, but I, I don't know, would love to know your thoughts on families at the bedside. What do you think? What's been your experience? Do you have limited visitation or are you open? Right. And uh, so another, um, Joel and I will do another 10 minute tidbit show. There was a new study just published on including family on rounds, right. which I think is fabulous. Yeah. So anyway, but um, we'll, we'll save that for another right. 10 minutes. Another discussion, yeah. So Joel, any other comments? I'm good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, the, I'm Nicole Kopchick. This is Joel Green. And this is 10 Minute Tidbits.